Okay. Any of this working? Can anyone hear me? First time doing a live stream, so. Trusting everyone can see me. How's everyone doing? Any of this working? Can anyone hear me? And as long as you guys can hear me, First that works. Stream, Sorry, so. this is all a little awkward. I'm trying to look at the uh, getting everything going. So, Indy, how's it going? Matt, how's it going? So, uh, thanks everyone for coming on to our first uh, live stream that we have going here. Um, never done anything like this, but thought it'd be kind of a sort of fun idea. Lego maker, <laughs> how's it going? How's uh, Philadelphia today? Hopefully it's sunny, since we are going into fall, so... Um, so the video basically is, uh, you know, whatever you guys want it to be. We can ask, uh, can always get questions about, uh, Company D, Sharpshooters, uh, what I think about the reenacting community going on so far today. Hopefully it's sunny. Uh, since we are going into fall, you know, so. can just ask whatever kind of questions you guys want. Uh, so I'm the video fa fairly is, uh, open person, uh, so you know, whatever can, uh, uh, want it to be. We can uh, like be can whatever we want it to be. Uh, so it's up to you guys. I bet uh, have a couple friends right now that are visiting over on the East Coast, and they say it's fairly hot. So can definitely understand that. Uh, uh, fairly open person. I want to cut my speakers so, back. Can, uh, whatever kind of questions you guys want, uh, be whatever we want it to be. So, so it's up to you guys. Hopefully, I'm not stepping on you guys. I've had a couple of interesting friends right now that are visiting over on the East Coast and they say it's been fairly hot. So, I can definitely understand that. Friends right now that are visiting over on the East Coast and they say it's been fairly hot. So, I can definitely understand that. Let's see if I can fix that real quick. Civil War uh, uniforms and equipment. Uh, I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Um, honestly, we do a lot of running, kind of being the, uh, the skirmishers and the light infantry. We do a lot, but honestly, I've, I've done both. I've done a little bit of line work um, at some smaller events with people, and I've had a lot of fun, but being a sharpshooter, uh, 
I don't know, it's just one of those things where you... <clears throat> I'm trying to think of how to uh, really think of how to put it. It's always an adventure, I guess. Um, there's always something done differently. Uh, it's just one of those things where the same thing is never... Or things are never the same. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to read... Uh, your guys' comments and all that and speak at the same time, so I'm getting a little uh, mixed up here, but basically in short, being a sharpshooter is a lot of fun. I absolutely loved it. I've been doing it. Uh, just ended my 10th year of reenacting as a sharpshooter, and I haven't regretted anything about it. Um, so how do we get our 1859 Sharps rifles? Um, gun broker? That's where most of us have gotten ours. Uh, First Sergeant Kep and I have gotten our Pedersolis. Uh, mine's right in there. Right in that. Uh, we got ours from Cabela's. So uh, basically any vendor, anything like that, that is uh, selling a Sharps rifle. Uh, let see. Matt, your Sharps doesn't have a double set trigger. That's completely fine. Um, you know, as long as it has a sharps down the road, you can buy a uh, a double set trigger system to go into your sharps. So that's always a uh, an option for you, um, depending what maker it is. If it's a Army Sport, definitely go through uh, 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 Taylor's and Company. Really good guys. I've bought a lot of uh, spare parts, mostly lock internals. I uh, basically refitted my first sharps that I got that was pretty used and abused when I got it. Um, it looks brand new right now. Everyone who has seen it absolutely loves it. So it's always fun. So Lego Maker, you plan to become a Civil War reenactor, fight for the Union Army. Um, we're not in Gettysburg. Um, we're out in Washington State, but I know some of us want to kind of go back east and all that, so maybe one of these times we can uh, meet up, do an event or something like that, or just kind of do a, I guess, impromptu meet and greet, which is always a little weird. Uh, Matt, if yours is a Petter Sully, uh, Flintlock, etc. cetera. Uh, the guy is the biggest importer of Petter Sully parts and uh, rifles here in the United States. Um, you have to call him. And definitely speak loudly. He's been a competition shooter almost his entire life, so his hearing's not the best. Uh, Dean Andrews, what is your opinion on the Whitworth rifle? Um, honestly, I've never personally shot a Whitworth. I have handled one. Um, they're great looking. Um, honestly, if you didn't know, you'd think it's just a very fancy uh, Enfield. Um, Shooting-wise, I really can't say anything I haven't shot one yet it is kind of one of those dream rifles that I do want to buy to actually go shooting with because I've heard they're very accurate but for use in reenacting especially as a confederate sharpshooter impression unless you're portraying a certain person that for sure carried a Whitworth rifle I would definitely uh, be the one to say for a sharpshooter impression for the Confederates, do not carry a Whitworth unless you are that person. You can do the P-53 Enfield, you can do the P-58 Enfield, the little two-bander, um, that was also used. But for a Whitworth, um, for private shooting, oh, yeah, by all means, go nuts with it. I'm um, going down through some more. Have I ever tried to meet the standards of live firing? If so, how'd I do? Um, I've been shooting... God, ever since I was a little kid. Um, I think the first pictures of me ever shooting, I was five years old. It was a little Browning 22 semi-automatic. Um, my great-grandpa is standing behind me holding it, and I have the stock sticking out about that far behind my shoulder, and my eyes about that close up to the scope. But with a 22, you shouldn't really worry about that. And, um... But with live firing, I've live fired my sharps once, um, did fairly okay. I mean, granted, it wasn't for any competition loads, but my groups were right around a 
10 inch group so I might have qualified I might not have um, I'm not the biggest uh, shooter of black powder I mostly do modern um, if I am going shooting or hunting um, between my grandpa and I we own quite a few firearms so it's always trying to prove up on which one is best for us uh, did any of you guys see any Civil War movies before taking up Civil War reenacting? Um, I remember seeing Gettysburg when I was a little kid, uh, playing with my cavalry Legos that I had, uh, the Western Legos, um, and my grandpa was watching it. Um, I was also always exposed to the History Channel with my grandpa, so it was always, you know, Tales of the Gun, Civil War documentaries, stuff like that. So in a way, yes, I was always around some sort of Civil War themed video, I should say. Um, just one of those things I've always been exposed to. I've always been a history buff, so that definitely also helps. Uh, why did I choose the sharpshooters? So that's actually a kind of a fun question. Um, so since I live in Washington State, I lived both on the uh, East side, where I'm from originally in Spokane, but I also lived about an hour and a half north of Seattle in a little town called Bellingham, and there used to be a reenactment there in a town north of there called Ferndale, and my mom took me out when I was about 12, and uh, basically went out there, thought this was the most amazing thing. I've never heard of Civil War reenacting before, I thought, in documentaries and all that. It was... Uh, done mostly as actors, but I didn't know there were Civil War reenactors. So I absolutely thought it was awesome. Um, found out I had to be 14 to carry a rifle. Okay, I'm gonna wait. I don't want to carry a flag or beat on a drum. I, I want to shoot. Like, what 12-year-old kid doesn't want to shoot? It's just one of those things. And uh, basically, we uh, waited, held off when my mom brought it back to me again where it's like, hey, do you want to try this reenacting thing? Yeah, sure, why not? Um, first saw that we have a Marine unit here in Washington. I come from a very long line of Marines in my family. Thought, hey, this would be really cool. Then I saw sharpshooters. Looked more into sharpshooters. Like, okay, so they're kind of like snipers and all that. Um, my grandpa, being a retired Marine Corps scout sniper who served in Vietnam, thought this would be really cool. Um, kind of get his input on it, but I also have been shooting my whole life, especially rifles, so that aspect really interested me. And why Company D? Um, really, it was just uh, the company designation of the sharpshooter unit that was already around about four years before I joined. Um, we've really kind of grown to our Company D designation, so we really haven't changed it much, though I've tried talking with the sharpshooters and Company D before, like, hey, why don't we change it to Company F? Because according to Brian White, there was a Verdan officer or a sharpshooter officer in Company F, Second U.S. that carried a Spencer rifle, just an excuse to buy another rifle, I guess. Alexander Fox, how's it going? Uh, Dean Andrews, would Company D travel south to California, Nevada or Utah to do a reenactment. If we can get enough of us to do it, I don't see why not. You could probably rent a van or something like that and go and do it. It'd be a lot of fun. See, my first Civil War movie was Glory when I was eight years, or when I was eight when I saw it. I think I was about ten when I saw Glory, so. But, and. Nice! Yeah, Craigslist is not one of those uh, common places to find muskets, at least where I live here in uh, eastern Washington, so. So, you're in, uh, Robert uh, Tholin, I hope that's what it says, or I'm getting it right. You're in your early teens and you want to start reenacting, how do you do? You can't get a job for a few years. Uh, well, there's two times of the year that you can ask for stuff, for reenacting. Christmas and birthdays. Um, that's how I started off when I got into reenacting was I made a wish list for Christmas for my birthday and sent it to everyone in my family. Pretty sure my, my poor grandparents love those people to death um, because I annoyed the, oh, just completely annoyed them before Christmas with everything that I wanted, was sending them lists and everything like that, and they, uh, um, I'm pretty sure my grandma actually told me to uh, 
basically to shut the hell up about it. Um, I was annoying her that much, and for Christmas, I got my frock coat, I got my forage cap, my trousers, my leather gear. Um, for basically two birthdays, or for, yeah, for two birthdays, I basically didn't get a present because my grandparents got me my sharps. Um, so, before you can get a job, mow lawns, birthdays, Christmas, help out around the house, you know, basically do the, the 1950s kid stuff of just working your butt off. Let's see. Civil War uniform and equipment. That's why I love, or that's why I reenact to preserve history and preserve the Union. I love history. I mean, I don't think, I think about 95% of people who reenact do it because they love history. So, and Lego Maker. I love Lego. You have one of the sets from Star Wars. I love Legos too. Um, I'm fairly certain both of my sisters have all my Lego sets growing up, so they're enjoying them too. Cannot say enough about Legos. I love them. Love them, love them. Can you show us your sword? I've always loved Civil War swords. Um, yeah, absolutely. Just one sec. So, here we are. Just a standard 1850 foot officer sword. So, I did uh, use acetone and kind of remove the, the blacking. That kind of goes in all the etching and everything like that. And I actually do take fairly good care of uh, my blade on the sword. Um, I actually need to do a video at some point on keeping swords in the bright and not a complete rust bucket. Um, that's one of the things that really bothers me with seeing officers is rusty swords. Uh, Indie Maiden, do we consider myself or my unit more of a campaigner or mainstream style? It's actually a really good question. Um, we are kind of a mix of both. I wouldn't say we're a campaigner, we're more progressive, um, leading to the side of campaigner. Um, we do have a mixture of mainstreamers and uh, the progressive side coming into the unit. Uh, we mostly started uh, as a very mainstream unit, you know, all green, leggings, stuff like that, but we've, we've definitely learned a lot more um, through research and all that, so we're getting there. Um, I, will we be a campaigner unit? It'd be really cool to be one of the very few uh, sharpshooter campaigner units and actually be respected in that sense. Let's see, Dean Andrews, Company D should come to our Vista California reenactment uh, in November. I'll see what we can do. Um, I'll talk with First Sergeant Kep, maybe some more of our. Uh, freer members, so to speak, um, definitely look into it. Uh, shoot me an email. Um, just look up our website, www.secondusss.com. Uh, www uh, My email's on there. Uh, send me an email so we can get chatting on this. This seems interesting. Uh, th thoughts on RL Topper. Um, from what I've seen, he's very knowledgeable. Um, can definitely be abrasive, but he definitely knows what he's talking about. Would he and I get along? I'm not entirely sure. Um, I did see their live stream that he and... Uh, I can't remember his name right now, but I do know of R.L. Topper. Personally, I don't know him as a person. I don't like to make uh, judgments on people that I don't know personally, so I can't really say much. I, uh, I don't judge a book by its cover, so I give everyone a fair shake until they show me who they are as a person. So see. Matt, unfortunately I have to leave the live feed right now. It's time for me to put my two babies to bed so my wife can do her homework. You don't want to have... Yep, you have a good night, Matt. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you can hop on if you have some time. So, so Civil War uniform and equipment. I had family in the Union Army, and it's pretty awesome on how we want to preserve the Union. I had family in both, um, both Union and Confederate sides. Uh, my direct lineage was Alexander Legrand Whitehall. He was actually in the sixth and si sorry ninth and sixtieth Indiana as first as a private and then as an assistant surgeon. Um, you can actually find old uh, brown pill bottles that say Whitehall on the side. That's actually my direct family lineage. Are we going to the Fort Blakely event? 
I've been seeing a lot about it. Uh, unfortunately, it just isn't going to work out, at least for me to go. Um, but I do encourage anyone in Company D to go. So definitely try and help people out for that. Let's see, hopefully we can help out the 71st Pennsylvania Company D. Oh, your unit. Um, we'll see. Hopefully we can uh, work it out. Most of us, though, have the, the blue fatigue blouse, but no blue trousers whatsoever. And I think only one of us has an Enfield, so we definitely would be a little different. But, you know, we can always fall in as a detachment of sharpshooters for you guys. I mean, detached service was definitely a very common thing with the sharpshooters. So be uh, something that we can do, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Well, did I actually catch up with all of the chat? Excellent. Wow. Um, so, yeah. Did anyone else have more questions? Uh, you know, it can be reenacting related, can be anything, really. Um, the floor is yours for you guys. Do I use my pistol? Um, sometimes. Sometimes I do. Uh, this last season, I was probably the most I've ever used a pistol, uh, mostly because we've been thrown out a lot more um, into some precarious situations. So that's where it can kind of come up a little more. Um, usually, though, I rarely actually use a pistol. In fact, to me, I rarely carry a pistol. It's just an extra pound and a half, two pounds of weight that I don't really use, unless we're planning on doing some some real running and gunning, then I will. Uh, some more equipment. My unit is doing that event. Oh, issued rations. That's something I've always really wanted to do. Issued rations is the coolest thing to see. See, your great grandfather was in the 101st Indiana Volunteer Infantry. Oh, very nice. That's awesome. I don't know much about the many of the Indiana regiments besides like the 19th stuff like that. So, you have two ancestors that served in the Union Army: Private Beat Henry and Baum. Oh, wow. That is one of the cool things that you never hear about with uh, the Civil War, is uh, the wagoners. I mean, regiments had wagons, so it's definitely one of those very few things that people hear uh, talk about or know of. Uh, Will Eckler. Uh, Will Eckler of the Civil War Digital Digest. I think he's an awesome guy. Uh, that channel is a huge help to the community. Um, if that's who I'm thinking of, hopefully I am. I'm terrible with names. It, if I can, uh, I'm one of the people where if there's a face, I can remember faces. People come up to me and be like, "Hey, Ethan, how's it going?" I'm like, "You with the face? What's going on?" Stuff like that. So, hopefully I'm right on that. Uh, Civil War guy, uh, 007. Let me know if I'm right on that, please. I don't want to be misjudging here. Uh, Civil War uniform and equipment. So how did you learn to make uniforms for your unit, or can you make people uniforms if they ask you? Um, uh, how did I learn? Self-taught. Uh, YouTube was a big help. Type in, you know, how to do a how to do a backstitch, how to do overcast stitch, stuff like that. Um, those are real help. My great-grandma was a fantastic uh, sewer. She made quilts, blankets, all sorts of stuff for me uh, growing up as a kid. Um, so self-taught, um, I remember watching her, granted, I don't know how to use a machine, she machine sewed, I was a little kid, um, before she got too much older that she couldn't do it anymore, so, um, and can I make uniforms for people if they ask me? Absolutely, um, again, it's just one of those things where someone emails me, finds me on Facebook, something like that, sends me a message of, hey, this is... Uh, could you do a sack coat or trousers or drawers for me? Uh, frocks, not yet. That's definitely still in the works coming down the road. Um, talking with Brian White here and there about doing some stuff like that. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I always game for someone for people. Um, 
always work out a little bit of a price, mostly just for my time, but it wouldn't be anything extravagant like, you know, $400 for a fatigue blouse, basically just be, you know, material and a little bit of labor, stuff like that. Aiden Blake, I'm from Vermont originally, which got me interested in the Civil War sharpshooters with an impression from Vermont Regiment Company E be allowed in yours as a transfer type soldier. Uh, I wouldn't see why not. Um, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, you and I've talked. You're living here in Washington State. Um, definitely. Um, if you look at the Company D roster, not every sharpshooter actually came from Maine. Uh, some of them came from some of the surrounding areas, some were Canadian, some were English. Uh, I believe there was a couple Germans in there too, so definitely not out of the question for you. Um, oh good, I have the right uh, Will Eckler. As I said, Civil War Digital Digest, awesome channel. Um, huge wealth of knowledge, so can always do that. Uh, Dean, this private needs Colin his company. Cool, yeah, I'd appreciate that. Definitely see if we can get the ball rolling on this. <laughs> At least I'm the only one that's good, uh, not good with names. Dean, you have a good one? Uh, do I like the Napoleonic Wars, um, Alexander? Uh, yes, however, I've never really reenacted it, but I do find it very interesting, um, especially with my family being very English heavy in my descent. Um, I believe we did have some family members fighting the Napoleonic Wars. I have to really look through that part of my family lineage. I know most of what we did here in the States, um, a little bit of our British history. So, just one of those things. Um, but do I like it? Yes, definitely. Um, I've seen the, the Sharp series with Sean Bean a few times, even though he's, you know, the Napoleonic James Bond. He's been caught cut, shot, stabbed, uh, you know, there was the hanging that happened with him, stuff like that. So yes, I definitely like the uh, the Napoleonic Wars. See, Lego Maker, I've been to a war reenactment at the Colonial Pennsylvania Plantation in 2017. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, whatever gets you going with uh, Civil War reenacting, might as well, right? Yeah, thank you, Indy. I wasn't anticipating 20 plus people on here. This is actually fairly, fairly awesome to uh, kind of have you guys with and have you guys be a part of. Are you ever going to come to Gettysburg? Uh, HB 13, yes. I'm hoping to this fall. Um, just need to work some stuff out uh, with work and some other things. So definitely going to try to get out that way. So I'll definitely be making a post either uh, more than likely on the uh, Sharpshooter Facebook page about coming out, kind of putting up a, hey, this is where I'll be if you guys like to meet up, talk, stuff like that. Um, so definitely one of those things. Let's see, did you learn or did you learn any other words like the Mexican War? Yes, um, I love American history, um, especially the uh, military aspect of it. So yes, very familiar with the Mex uh, Mexican-American War, the War of 1812. I actually had family fight in the War of 1812 um, and the Rev War. Um, we were actually British nobles and the, before the Rev War and that kind of stuff really happened and very interesting. Um, see, do I make accoutrements? Uh, here and there, yes. Uh, cat pouches, stuff like that. Belts are fairly easy, canteen slings. Uh, currently working on a uh, Sharps cartridge box. So, Terry Davison, before he uh, kind of went on his little slight temporary uh, CISO production that he did. Going to be my first reenactment next month in Illinois. Any tips for newbie first time out? Yes. Drink plenty of water, have fun, and soak up as much information as possible. Ask questions. Questions are the biggest help for you. If you don't know anything, if you're unsure, ask. Um, but also, do a lot of research. You know, when you get home from an event, you know, hop on, start doing some research, stuff like that. 
don't study pictures of reenactors. Study original pictures. That's the best. And uh, most TV shows, movies, and documentaries are fairly wrong with uniforms and gear. There are some that are right, though. So, you know, just keep an open mind and do your research. But for your first event, have fun. Reenacting is so much fun. So definitely hope, uh, hope that works out for you. Uh, let's see, <laughs> Alexander, yeah. Um, I like it just because it's entertaining, mostly because it's so historically wrong. Uh, but yes, it is a lot of fun. Jonathan uh, Gomez, thank you very much. Uh, glad you uh, love the channel. Hopefully uh, we can keep, uh, keep those standards up for you. Aiden? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and thank you. Um, really enjoying the, the live stream so far. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, 2019, 2020, stuff like that. You know, I understand other hobbies in life. It does happen. Um, you know, if you do get time to come out to an event with us, you know, we do have loaner gear, so you don't need everything right away. There is uh, that option for you. Pennsylvania Germans. Mine were uh, North Carolinian, uh, North Carolinians. So, in fact, uh, one of the other Alexander Legrands uh, was a tax collector for King George. Um, we were actual British nobles, and he renounced our nobility and raised a company of uh, North Carolina militia. So that's always fun. Hey, for Sergeant Kep's on. What's going on, Jared? Uh, I'll get to yours here in just a sec. So, is shooting Civil War rifles for accuracy a popular hobby? I used to do precision shooting with modern firearms and firing the 1859 sharps with live rounds. It's definitely something I'm interested in. Um, yes, there's actually the North South Civil War or North South Skirmish Association. Sorry about that. And yes, um, it's mostly back east. They go insane. Cannons, pistols, carbines. Uh, rifles, stuff like that. Yes, it's a very popular thing, especially back east. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And we do it too here in Washington. So, in fact, I have 10 rounds that were loaded up by First Sergeant Kep. So, um, seconding the drink, lots of water. Oh, wow, I didn't know you do uh, middle, medieval reenacting. And yeah, especially, you know, armor heavy wool clothing. I can definitely understand that. And yes, Jared, um, sorry, First Sergeant Kep, since you're on here, yes, um, my love for the sharpshooters runs deep. So, that's, uh, something I got a couple weeks ago. So, it's kind of promised myself if the sharpshooters gave me a really solid season, which they did this last year, I would get a, a tattoo to commemorate that for them. Um, they're like family to me. Very big in the family. I also have my my other tattoos, my family crest. So uh, one of those awesome things. So so uh, first sergeant, how are you doing? Assume uh, getting back into the school year is always fun. Uh, Lego maker, thank you. That's actually our uh, nationals right there. Our regimentals are right behind me. Well, more to the other side of me. So thank you. They're very nice. We. Very fortunate to have a set. Yes, they did. Um, very much so. Uh, Civil War uniforms and equipment. Let's see, you're with the Third New York, or uh, sorry, New North Carolina State Troops. Very nice. Very very nice. I need to actually remember where my uh, uh, my family came from in North Carolina. So I need to get a hold of that and see exactly where you know. Uh, Jason Brown, you're very welcome. Um, the sewing one is something I've wanted to do for a very long time. I just had no reasonable uh, explanation to buy another kit from Wamba and sew it until uh, we got a new member. So definitely uh, happy that it's helping it out for you, and you're very welcome for all the educational videos. We're happy to help. Uh, First Sergeant Kep has been a great help with doing these uh, since he's done the majority of the videos. I definitely cannot take credit for the uh, a lot of the YouTube channel. He's done a lot of help with us on that. Let's see here. 
Uh, I got lost. Oh, and uh, thank you guys. Yeah, um, definitely uh, liking the tattoo so far. Something I won't regret, so I'm glad other people like it and appreciate it. It's definitely not going to be my only two that I have. I have quite a few for a couple other hobbies and some family stuff that I want to get, so it's always fun. And any maiden, yes. Savor reenacting, especially a fam uh, a unit, is definitely a family. I have family sp with the sharpshooters. They're a great bunch of people. Couldn't pick a, a better company to reenact with. Uh, Jonathan Gomez, I actually didn't start uh, the sharpshooters. Um, I became captain back in 2015 after we've had uh, a couple other company commanders, stuff like that. But basically, to start a unit, um, at least here in Washington, you have to have minimum minimum of eight people. You have to have a commander, an NC, uh, senior NCO, uh, eight people to take the field as combatants. Uh, you have to have a unit history, and you have to do a two-year probationary probationary period where you do not vote on any of the board, stuff like that. And if you pull eight members uh, over 50% of events here in Washington, you become a fully-fledged unit in that aspect. So that's... Uh, how we did it. Uh, let's see, Trevor Blackstone. Do you... Yes, we actually do have a set of climbers that uh, First Sergeant Kep found um, that he gave to me that I restored. Um, unfortunately, they're down in my storage unit, uh, so I don't really have them on me, but yes, we do bring them out to show them to the public. Um, they're really interesting. I actually also need to do a video on that as well. <laughs> we have a lot of videos that we need to do that we just haven't had time to do yet, so. Yes, you're very correct, uh, Civil War Uniform and Equipment. It was up to the states to take care of their troops then. Um, sorry, and I keep looking over my shoulder because one of my roommates is getting ready for work or something like that, so. Uh, Lego Maker, somewhere down yeah, there's plenty of Pennsylvania reenacting units out there, uh, Lego Maker, so you're definitely in the right spot for that. Yeah, have a good one, Aiden. Uh, I'm glad that uh, glad the, you uh, appreciate these videos and you like them. Uh, it's definitely uh, more drive for us to do more for you guys. Uh, what was my favorite Civil War general or generals? Oh, there's a lot. Um, wow, that's a loaded question from uh, for this one. There's, um, let's see, uh, General Thomas, the Rock of Chickamauga. Um, especially his whole backstory, you know, a Virginian, his family basically disowned him. Um, because he felt his ties were stronger with the country instead of his state. Uh, Grant, not just because, you know, I mean, he wasn't a military genius. He just knew, hey, let's get this over with. We just, you know, you need to keep moving, you know, by the right flank, by the right flank, by the right flank, or left flank, however I'm facing. By the flank, basically. Um, definitely not McClellan. Great organizer. Heart of a chicken. Um... Yes, I'll probably get some flack for this. I think Sherman was a good general. War is ugly. It's never a pretty thing. So yes, unfortunately having to take the fight through you know, the civilian heart of Georgia to end a war, unfortunately was a thing. Um, stuff like that. Let's see. Hey Jesse, what's going on? Yeah, I can understand being a jackrabbit. When I was uh, a private, I ran everywhere. So that was a lot of fun uh, jumping around and moving. Um, sometimes I got a little too far ahead, and they kind of had to start yanking me back. And thank you again, uh, Civil War Uniform and Equipment. He was a, a very good uh, very good general. So Jonathan Gomez. Oh, very nice. Yeah. 
regulars are pretty awesome. That's why I kind of love the sharpshooters being, you know, the volunteer regulars of uh, the army. One of those really interesting things. So I'm just checking out some stuff here. Uh, Okay, there we go. Sorry, first Sergeant Kep was giving me some uh, some advice on the uh, the stream through through text. So, what else do we got here? Of course, I had to mention Sherman. Of course, Jesse. What else would you expect from me? How many eye rolls did McClellan's wife get when reading his letters? Probably a lot. His letters were very, very whiny. Uh, yeah. And Jared's back on. Yes. Yes, carrying a map sack has been a very big thing here. So. Oh, very nice. You're someone that, uh, he was named after Sherman, uh, Jonathan Gomez. That's very cool. Uh, Lego Maker, do I have any infantry gear? Yes, um, sharpshooters are infantry light infantry, skirmishers, stuff like that. So yes, we have the belt, the canteen, knapsack, haversack, um, brogans, stuff like that. So yes, we do have infantry gear. Granted, mine's all buried currently under all of that. So it'd be a little hard to get to. Yep, I know exactly how that goes. We, uh, one of our uh, former NCOs in our unit actually used to joke around all the time that they uh, needed to get a leash for me to kind of, you know, rope me back or uh, a, a lead, I guess. Let's see here. Uh, Jesse, First Sergeant Kemp is in the chat, so definitely feel free. Um, in fact, Jared, Jesse is the guy who was wanting the cop made for him. So, kind of cool that you guys are somewhat meeting through this whole uh, uh, live stream. Sorry. Worked earlier today, so still a little brain fried from lack of sleep and stuff like that. So. Uh, see here, and what is my favorite knapsack? My sharps, uh, the sharpshooter sack, uh, knapsack, or the double bag? Uh, well, I can't really say I have a, a favorite or not because uh, I have both. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, personally, I love the sharpshooter knapsack. It fits the back so well. Um, however, as an officer, I can't find much evidence of sharpshooter officers wearing the, the hair trunk, so to speak. So that's one of those things. Um, so that's mainly why I rock the double bag. Um, the double bag, I don't find that uncomfortable. Um, it's definitely less comfortable than the uh, sharpshooter's knapsack. So it's just one of those uh, one of those uh, preference things, I guess. Doesn't really uh, doesn't really matter too much to me. It's just if I can be enlisted, I'll I'll do the sharpshooter pack. I guess that's the easiest one to to say. Um. Yes, if there were more authentic sharpshooter groups, uh, Bryce, that'd be really cool to do. Um, unfortunately, most of them are kind of, hey, we need to wear all green. This is what they were initially issued. It's like, please no, make some blue in there. You know, get some standard infantry stuff, please. But, eh, you know, it's just one of those things. Uh, Lego Maker, yes, Enfields are nice. I have wi fired a couple of them. Uh, or at least one a couple times, I should say, and they're a lot of fun to shoot. I absolutely love uh, shooting muzzle loaders. They're a real fun, real fun time. Your NCOs are just making the same joke. Yeah, I feel your pain. It's a lot of fun. I still do it, even as captain. 
Like, I'll be running, shouting the commands, and everyone's just trying to trail up behind me. I like to run. Just an odd thing. Wow, more chat. Okay. Yes, uh, Jared actually brings up a good point. We, for the first time ever this last season, we, or this last summer, we uh, actually fought an entire battle by the bugle. So bugling all commands, and we actually did fairly all right. I have to give credit, though, to uh, First Sergeant Kep and uh, Corporal Speakerman. They knew the calls better than anyone else in the company, so everyone kind of had this, all right, what's that? And they were kind of watching on either flank of the skirmish line of, oh, hey, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, we need to fall back, or okay, yeah, we need to stand up, or okay, we need to lay down, stuff like that. So, yes, it was a lot of fun. Um, Civil War and Uniform and Equipment. Uh, my double bag was actually made by Nick Sakala. I got it through a uh, regimental quartermaster when they were selling a lot of his gear. So I kind of went through them instead of him just because I've heard it can be a long wait, and it was before our season started, so I needed to really get it, uh, get it going. And, uh, yeah. American Civil War Knapsacks is where I got my hair trunk from, and Paul Lopez does some amazing work. Um, so if anyone ever needs a knapsack, especially if you're doing a sharpshooter impression, Paul Lopez, uh, American Civil War Knapsacks is the way to go. Yes, Lego Maker, the uh, the famous hardtack story. Um, just so everyone will uh, can, is up to speed on this. So the sharpshooters are on the march, and... Uh, they haven't eaten in like three days, and they were they just wanted hardtack, something to fill their gut. And uh, their brigade or division uh, commander was riding by on his horse, and sharpshooters were chanting, you know, hardtack, hardtack, hardtack at him. And the general stopped and pulled his pistol out of his holster and was holding it up, and, you know, I, basically something along the lines of, you know, I swear the next man that says hardtack will, um, will blow a hole through him. And of course, the sharpshooters being the smart asses that they were, you know, one sharpshooter yells out the hard tack, and the general wheels around, levels his pistol down out of sharpshooter. And, uh. That general heard the sound of a sharp's rifle being cocked. But not just any, or not just one sharp's rifle, the entire regiment. Um. Basically, he holstered his pistol, rode away, very mad uh, that that happened, for very obvious reasons. And, uh, yeah, basically, no sharpshooter died that day, and no general died that day. Let's see. Do you find your unit being used? Um, yes, more so these days. Um, for the longest time... We were used as mainline infantry in an aspect, um, but more and more, yes, we're being used as skirmishers and flankers um, and stuff like that, much to the uh, chagrin of the Confederate battalion saying, well, you know, they didn't fight on the wings. It's like, yes, they did. Skirmishers fought on the wings of the army. Hate to break it to you guys, but that's how it was done. Jesse, you wish you could... Yeah, how's your leg doing, by the way, man? Uh, remember our last video chat? Uh, we had for uh, the North South group. You uh, we're still having some issues with that. Let's see, Bryce, you saw a sharpshooter wearing a neon green pipe. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no, the neon green just bothers me to no end. Cannot stand bright green uniforms for sharpshooters. And, uh, yes, going fo uh, all out on uniforms and, like, gear and all that is the best. I absolutely love it. Uh, Trevor Blackstone, I have not heard anything of that. Um, dyeing uh, blue sack coats to green. Uh, there's never been any reference to a green sack coat or dyeing uh, blue sack coat to green. Um just one of those things of people like to assume the sharpshooters always wore green. 
I thought that too at one point. I had a green undershirt, a green vest, green frock, green trousers, green canteen cover when I first started because I was a farb when I first started. It happens. We're all farbs in one way. So, uh, Lego Maker. The battlefields I like to see or visit, all of them. Uh, there really isn't one that I want to see less than the other. Um, it's history. I want to. I would love to see all the Civil War battlefields, and then work on Revolutionary War and War of 1812, and you know stuff like that. I love road trips, so to me that's just a plus to me. But uh, get my rifle put away real quick. Jesse, pain, lots of pain. I can imagine that's, yeah, I mean, I have a knee issue also, so I can definitely feel your pain on that. It's not fun. Hopefully it doesn't keep you away from the field next year. So, but I don't know if they're telling you to ice it, ice it, man. Like, hopefully that, uh, hopefully it doesn't, uh, get you a drop from the National Guard and stuff like that or drop you from reenacting altogether. So, best of luck to you, man. Uh, yes, I've been to Disney World and Disneyland. Um, once or twice. Once when I was a very little kid for Disney World. I think I was like six. Oh, yeah. But Jared, you and I just need to work on going back east at some point together so we can just nerd out. Granted, I'm sure Melissa would just absolutely be fed up with you and I by the end of that trip. Bryce, I can imagine. I can imagine. see indie maiden gettysburg has a dyed frog that they yes yes they did in fact um that was actually most of the first issue uniforms for the sharpshooters they uh over dyed a lot a lot of stuff for the sharpshooters damn not bad seven and a half miles for a first event that's <laughs> That's impressive, and you've stuck with it, so obviously you're not uh, not afraid to uh, put some real work in. That's awesome. Uh, Aiden, awesome. Welcome back. Uh, let's see. Are there any specific exercises that you find useful to uh, strengthen the back? Um, for me, it's not really my back that kills me. Um, it's more the shoulders. Um, after a very long march, and it really depends on how you carry your pack. Um, for the double bag, it I find taking the uh, shoulder straps and kind of the uh, ones that most people tie across their chest. I usually, if it's a long march, I'll hook them to the belt. So I should kind of show you guys real quick. So there's the uh, you know the the usual method where this these are crossed like that. I prefer to pull them down and hook them onto my belt, so that way it's more supportive of the belt. Um, but for stretching, stuff like that, exercises, I would say just stretch out your back. Um, that's my best suggestion uh, to you, Aiden. Um, you know, rotate, kind of do the bends, stuff like that. I'm not much into stretching. Um, I usually start stretching when the problem's already there. Uh, stuff like that. Except Jared's got a good one. Uh, yeah, core strength. Definitely. And uh, yeah, lots of city marching. Before uh, reenacting seasons kick up, probably about two months before, I actually will walk around my uh, neighborhood with either the hair trunk or a double bag fully packed. Um, it really helps. Oh, Jesse, yes. My uh, my family background from the Civil War. 
So uh, general, uh, actually, yeah. General and President Harrison, I should say, um, is a relative of mine. Uh, there's been quite a few uh, Whitehalls. Um, there was two in the 2nd Massachusetts Cavalry. There was one in the Pennsylvania Cavalry, or Infantry, sorry. There was a Confederate Cavalry Captain in the 9th Virginia. There was Alexander Legrand, my 5th or 6th great-grandfather, I believe. Not sure on how many greats that was right now. Um, there was Harvey Whitehall of the New Mexico Mounted Spies and Scouts. There was a Whitehall in the 1st Colorado Cavalry. And there was a Whitehall that was in the USCT. Um, so we, I believe my family did own slaves in North Carolina at one point. Most slaves did take after their master's last name. One of those things. Um, however, what Jesse is getting to is my cousin is General George Pickett. And the cool part is, when I lived up in Bellingham, north of Seattle, he was stationed there at Fort Bellingham during the Pig War. Uh, my senior picture was taken at the house that he lived at, and I frequently cro uh, crossed a bridge that he commissioned to have be built in Bellingham. So uh, one of those really cool, uh, cool little uh, ties to the Civil War that I have. Uh, what I prefer Union uniforms or Rev uniforms? Both. Um, I think both are unique in their aspects of the war, of the industrial might of the North and the agricultural side of the South. Um, both to me are interesting. I really can't say I prefer one over the other. Um, I guess it just depends on the time of year or what side I might be betraying. Uh, who would I recommend for getting a musket? Uh, I assume that you were talking about uh, Jonathan G uh, Gomez about where to get one from. Uh, there's a lot of sources out there. Um, ones that come to mind would be like Regimental Quartermaster, um, Czech Gunbroker. Sometimes there are some really good deals on there. Taylors and Company. Um, Sometimes Cabela's has a sale on muskets. Uh, just really depends on where you're looking. Ooh, yeah, breaking in full brogans on a long march. I've done that once. It's absolute utter hell. Um, yeah, blisters and cut up heels and stuff like that. It's it's never fun. But yes, like uh, Jared said, quality uh, quality brogans are a huge help. I cannot endorse Missouri boot and shoe enough. My boots, uh, my boots I use for my officer's impression are fantastic. I love those things. Let's see, in Bryce Lovers, yes, Wamba White and Company is amazing. I believe all of our sack coats are made by them. Uh, my private purchase officer's blouse is made by them, uh, by Brian White. Um, in fact, um, going into Wamba White and the whole sewing thing, yes, there will be a how to sew a school kill arsenal trouser video coming sometime this winter. So everyone keep your eyes out if you want to know how to uh, sew trouser kits. And Lego Maker, yes, in fact, uh, Private Soderling and his wife are huge Star Wars fans. Um, I believe their wedding bands actually have Mandalorian on the inside written. And early war or late war? Again, both. Um, they have their own uniqueness to it. Early war, you definitely had a huge hodgepodge of militia uniforms, everything like that. And then late war, it was a lot more standardized, but there was also a lot more new innovations. Again, I can't really pick one or the other. Unless you're talking about late war or early war sharpshooters, mid to late war, preferably for me. Um, yes, I do love the sexy Berdan look of all green with the, the leggings and the ostrich plume in the cap and the uh, uh, Tiffany knapsack. But later in the war, when they looked almost like everyone else, but 
they were good at their job. So, um, again, it's just personal preference for me. <laughs> uh, Indy, they do not. Um, that's the uh, one thing that Dan is very adamant about. A lot of work goes into making a frock, and it's a lot of terminology that is used. So, uh, uh, Dan just doesn't want to put up with getting calls and emails all the time of, hey, I don't know how to do this part. Hey, I don't know how to do this part. It's just one of those things. Um, unfortunately, no one really is selling a frock kit that I know of. Because um, I know there's some talented people out there that could easily sew a frock. Wow, coming from CNC, which is the typical mainstream uh, kind of vendor and all that, and Brogan's from there, which are kind of a one-size-fits-all, so to speak. Um, that's impressive. That not one blister. Like, hats off to you on that one. That's really cool. Uh, Trevor Blackstone, where do we get our forge caps from? Um, besides me hoping to start trying to make them sometime this uh, this winter, uh, we get ours through uh, Caps and Kepis on Facebook. Uh, the man who runs that is Russell Osmiansky. Um, cannot talk enough about his work. They are very nice. Uh, Putin me up. Putting me up, putting me up. I like the name. That's awesome. Uh, so my opinion of Hawkins rifles for reenacting. Yes, we have a couple Hawkins in the sharpshooters for our target rifles, but for your standard Union or Confederate infantrymen, no. Leave it at home. Go deer hunting with it. But please do not take the field with it. They weren't really used uh, very late in the war, or like almost at all in the war, unless you're doing very far west, you know, trans Mississippi, or very, er very early war. Um, that's my opinion, though. Yes, frocks are, um, I'm definitely no Brian White, or uh, Kelly Ford, or Nick Sakala or Kyle Windhall, but, you know, I think with enough time and practice, I could probably get one down just fine. Kind of a... Uh, drops this time of the day too which is really odd and unfortunate so matthew shot how's it going uh oh you and putting me up are reenacting buddies uh i don't believe the navy would have used uh hawkins they had their own contracts with sharp spencer and the other federal contractors so Yeah, it's always the tiny blisters that hurt. That's never fun. Oh, wow. Rice, uh, lovers. That's really cool. Yeah, we haven't had anyone grow uh, a cornfield or built a sunken road, which there may be something uh, going on here eventually with uh, actually all across the United States um, with that. Yeah, and Jared's not uh, not wrong. The Navy definitely did have some amazing revolvers, or firearms in general, that really aren't that uh, well known. Uh, Lego Maker, any Civil War songs I like? Yeah, there's quite a few. Uh, I think mine and uh, First Sergeant Kep's mutual uh, two mutual favorites is uh, Hard Times Come Again No More, uh, the somber one, not the very happy one that. Yeah, a unit here in Washington State likes to sing all cheery and happy. It's, I like it as it's more somber kind of song. Um, 
Let's see here. Vacant chair is the other one. I know uh, First Sergeant Kep also really likes the vacant chair. I have, he was the one that actually turned me on to that one. So, uh, Jared, thank you for that. Oh, Ian, you are. <sighs> You're an ass. You want to get a rant out of me or something, don't you, man? <laughs> uh, of course, you already already do the, already do this at events, so of course you would. Um, yeah, the sharpshooters were not at Bull Run. Um, Colonel Burdan did not threaten to put anyone's foot up anyone's ass. Hope people get that reference. And uh, yeah, like First Sergeant Kep said, there was not enough roundhouse kicks. Um. Honestly, I was not impressed with it. I'm going to leave it at that. I will rant about that for a while. It's like, it would be like me ranting about uh, the Sharp series if I was a, a uh, Napoleonic War reenactor. It's just best to leave it as be. All right, Indy, you have a good one. Uh, and thank you very much. Thanks for being a part of this. Tenting tonight, too, is uh, also a good one. Thank you for uh, bringing that one up. I knew that was one that I forgot. Yeah, Ian, I did not get that far into it, uh, honestly, man. Because, same thing, the bull run scene was just horrendous. And the fact that they were trying to portray sharpshooters there, and... Uh, yeah, it was... For the time the series came out, it was acceptable. But, you know, that's also when, you know, uh, Blue Jeans was acceptable also. So it's just one of those things. You know, I, I love you, man, but God, did you really have to do that? <laughs> Had to throw that, that little monkey wrench in at me, man. Uh, any thoughts on the History Channel Civil War combat? Um, Lego Maker, is that a new show, new series, or is it something that's been around for a while? <laughs> yeah, that's right. For Sergeant Nolan puts uh, Berdan's in a corner. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, but yes, Lego Maker. Uh, I don't have cable. I have internet, so I really can't say I've seen the uh, History Channel Civil War Combat unless it's an older uh, show or series. Um, then I might have seen it. I just might not remember. Really, they got the rest right. Ian, you and I might have to have a movie night or something, man, and uh, see if we can stomach our way through it. I believe uh, some beers would have to definitely be in order, or uh, some uh, some good old Irish or Canadian tea. If uh, if you'd be up for that, that'd be fun. Have a, a in depth synopsis afterwards. Uh, it's an old show. Yes, I do remember that. Um, God, I was a little kid then, too. I mean, 99 to 2003, I was 7 to 11 years old. Um, so, yeah, I do vaguely remember it. Um, I believe that's actually one of the things that got me started into uh, Civil War history and being really interested in it. So, yeah, I actually do vaguely remember that. Yeah, Ian, definitely. Um, let's get to chatting uh, later after this uh, live stream on uh, see how we can make that work. That'd be a lot of fun.
Yes, First Sergeant does have his uh, his favorite songs as well. Man, thank you guys again for uh, jumping in on this uh, stream. This is a lot of fun. Definitely haven't done anything like this, but it's really cool uh, connecting with everyone like this and chatting about everything. In fact, you guys can talk amongst yourself real quick. I gotta use the bathroom and I'll be right back, so. Just one sec. Okay, and we're back. Let's see here, how much is added? Um, I don't think I've ever seen uh, Andersonville uh, Lego Maker, so I can't really say much on that. Trevor Blackstone, your videos are a what? <laughs> Couldn't get uh, the rest of that, so unfortunately I'm not sure what you're trying to say on that one. Yeah, um, actually I'm kind of interested. Where is everyone from? Um, me and Ian, I already know where you're from, man. Uh, Jared, again, I already know where you're from, so. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool to see uh, where our scope of uh, viewers are from and subscribers right now. That'd be really cool. Yes, you guys get to know one of my bad habits. I chew on ice. Hey, I have the same problem, Trevor. It's all good. Texting takes a while with me, so. Maker of the Iron Brigade, uh, they're yes, they were amazing. I would definitely say they're badass, but a lot of regiments in the Civil War were badass. Um, you uh, you don't just go charging into uh, the face of uh, cannons and very more up to date firearms and uh with outdated tactics. I mean, most normal people just don't do that. That is so incredible. Um, I mean, God, you had the Vermont Brigade that did a lot of work too. Um, so I think the Iron Brigade definitely did a lot of work, but every regiment, every brigade did their fair share in the Civil War. Wow, we got a, quite a few of you guys from Texas. We got Justin, Civil War Uniform and Equipment, Jonathan Gomez, we got New York. Yes, that is true. Um, there was Virginia. 
uh, Union units. Yes, uh, Lego Maker, you are not Lego Maker. Uh, uniform, uh, Civil War uniform and equipment. You're very right about that. Um, Sharpshooters actually kind of the unsung heroes about Little Round Top. So. Ooh, yeah. Phil, yep. You know, that is one thing I can say I've actually never had is a true Philly cheesesteak. So one of these times when I go to Pennsylvania, I need to stop by Philadelphia and actually get myself a true Philly cheesesteak. So, Lego Maker, you'll be uh, you'll be my guide on where to find a good one at. <laughs> I'm glad that uh, our videos are helping you, Trevor. That's awesome. Always glad to uh, glad to hear that. California, cool. Wow, me chewing on ice was spiking that like crazy. I'm sorry, guys. Like I said, it's a rather bad habit. I do have water in this that I should actually be drinking, not the ice. Until it splashes in my face. Hey, first minute of Minnesota Sharpshooters, what's going on? Glad to uh, see that you made it onto uh, the stream. Yeah, Jesse, don't you chew though? So, I mean, yes, First Sergeant Cap and I are the ones who uh, have the uh, e cigs and stuff like that. But you know, it's better than uh, killing us. So, and good. I'm glad you're doing well, uh, First Minnesota Sharpshooters. That's awesome. Very glad that you can be on here. It's cool to have uh, one of our partners in crime, so to speak, uh, on our channel, or on our uh, channel stream. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I thought uh, I've seen you with a, a spitter a couple times, but it's all good, Jesse. Everyone's got our, we all got our vices in life, so. Could be worse, man. Could be worse. So, uh, what other questions, uh, subjects, stuff like that, people have for uh, for the stream? I'm kind of interested. You guys have asked some fantastic questions so far, by the way, too. Like, you guys are actually blowing me away with uh, with how well the stream is going. This is really cool. Excellent. I'm glad that uh, that uh, you like uh, the videos. Yours are definitely very helpful too, especially with the shooting aspect. That is really cool. Ooh, first sergeant Kep's got a great idea. Yeah, doing some Tannerite. Unfortunately, we got a we got a shooting ban right here uh, here in Washington State right now, just because it's been so dry. And we've had so many bad, uh, yeah, forest fires here in Washington, so. Uh, Lego Maker, you plan to get more Union outfits. Uh, what do you have so far? Uh, give me a list, that way I can kind of gauge, uh, Kind of what you need or where you should be getting some stuff at. Uh, talk about the bayonet. Well, with the sharpshooters, uh, they absolutely hated the damn things at first. They threw theirs away um, because they were promised not to be used as uh, frontline infantry, and then 
all of a sudden they get these awesome sharps rifles and they're riflemen, but they get something that's used for frontline infantry. So they threw them away. And then when they were inspected, they uh, were kind of curious where uh, all these bayonets went. So they're like, hey, you know, where are your bayonets at? You were issued them. And oh, well, we lost them. It's like, yeah, I'm sure you lost all of your bayonets. So they had to buy them back. Um, but really, bayonets are a, they're like a Swiss army knife. You can open uh, boxes with them, cans with them, cook food, candle holder, dig rifle pits. Uh, I think First Sergeant Kep's favorite way to use a bayonet is to uh, uh, heat it up, bend it in the fire, and then use it as a body hook for dragging dead bodies around, stuff like that. So, I can go on forever about a bayonet. I love bayonets. I have my Sharps bayonets um, in my gun cabinet. I have my Mauser K98 bayonet in my room just for fun. So, can never talk enough about them. And Jesse, yes, I plan on coming to Remembrance Day weekend. Um, still working out all the details on that. It'd be great to meet you guys in person. So. Uh, Eric DeCleric. That's an awesome name, man. That's cool. Uh, dying is one of those really fun questions in scenarios with civil war reenacting because there's so many variables of it there's you know you're out of ammunition um you're just hot tired and exhausted and you just want to rest up um your company commander or whoever's in charge of you uh, your unit tells you to die um uh, but uh, there's also some units where they actually, uh, sorry for kind of stopping up there, I was trying to figure out how to put this. There's some units where they'll actually issue out ammunition and they'll slip a different colored cartridge in with the box. So you're pulling out all these white cartridges, biting them, pouring them, and then you pull out a black one. That's your last round. You die. So it's just one of those really uh, done at random kind of deaths, which is really cool and unique. First Minnesota, I can't wait to see that. Shooting up some homemade body armor work with. That's cool. That is really cool. I can't wait to see that. Uh, Lego Maker, you got a really good set so far, especially having the Hardy, a Kepi, and a Forge Cap. You got a Sack Coat, a uh, Bayonet. I assume you have your Bayonet Scabbard. Um. I'd probably start working towards a frock. That'd be another really good choice, or uh, an infantry jacket, like a shoe kill or sorry, school kill arsenal uh, jacket. That'd also be a good one for you. Uh, Flying verse farm. You're very welcome. I'm glad uh, our channel and stuff like that was a. Uh, or is a, uh, a really good uh, thing that's helping you guys out, and we're happy to f uh, fill one of those uh, niches within the, the community, especially with YouTube. It seems like it's one of those untapped resources. Um, the Civil War Digital Digest, uh, the 11th OVC, which, uh, shout out to them. Uh, they gave us a shout out in their last video. Uh, you know, we're kind of somewhat, I feel like, the future of our our community, our hobby is, you know, getting these, uh, uh, videos out more know-how. I mean, knowledge is power. So <laughs> Breen kept with, so uh, Jared, apparently, uh, you might have to be coming to a uh, Gettysburg with me this November, if we can swing it. Uh, Justin Dalby, you're very welcome. Um, it's I've said it already. It's one of those videos I really wanted to do for a while. Uh, here in uh, Raul Castro, I just saw your comment too. Um, I'm glad you guys like those videos. Uh, next one will be coming out this Sunday. Um, coat's already done. Um, so, forewarning, it's already done. Um, 
I just gotta get the last video recorded. So. Oh yes, and First Sergeant Kep does make a good point. A knapsack, a period handkerchief, and a contract issue or a contractor issue shirt. Yes. Thank you, Jared, for actually covering those. That's something I uh, completely passed over. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping around in the uh, the chats right now. A little bit of a ADD going on, so forgive me. Yep, and Jared does make a good point. I prefer to have my first sergeant alive so we can... Uh, move more uh, safely across the field, especially since um, in our club here in Washington State, we are the only uh, unit that's allowed to fire prone. So, uh, you know, we have horses running around, stuff like that. We need to have our kind of guides up of, hey, this is where their line is, especially if it's grass. Um, you know, safety is our biggest concern. We always want to make sure that we come off or go on the field in one piece and come off the field relatively in one piece not two well honestly i'm okay if my guys come back to camp in two pieces it's three pieces when i kind of start getting a little grumpy so yes that actually be really cool uh hopefully it's flying uh flying versus farm i hope i'm getting that right um that's definitely an impression that really isn't uh, talked about mostly, and unfortunately it's kind of frowned upon within the community as the Vivandier impression, but not much is really spoken of about it, um, especially on YouTube. So, hell, I'd be willing to watch that and definitely promote that. That'd be really cool uh, to see done. See, and I think there might be a little lag in the chat coming through, because, which is fine. <sighs> so how is everyone's uh, day going or been? I mean, for you guys on the, uh, the East Coast, it is 8.30 now, so it's only 5.30 for us over here. So, so for, yeah, so how is your day going and how has your day been, I should say? evening for uh, our people east of the Mississippi. Okay, so flying VS farm. Okay, got that. I will definitely make sure to be doing that for you. I'm glad your uh, Heatwave uh, Lego Maker is starting to wind down for you. So that's awesome. Oh, nice, Josie. Fallout 4. I haven't really played much Fallout. Uh, me and my roommates and uh, my group of friends, we play uh, Rainbow Six Siege on uh, PC a lot. A lot. In fact, I'm actually going to be building a computer so I can be doing these streams more and video editing more, but also being playing with those guys a lot better because uh, 
I play off what's called the flapjack, which is what I'm on right now, the, the computer, uh, the laptop computer that I have, so a lot of fun. Uh, Trevor, so you're selling some of your modern, uh, or sorry, a lot of your modern firearms to pick up a Verdan rifle. Sacrifices, man. Sacrifices. <laughs> I feel your pain with that one. Had one, uh, we have one guy in our unit that sold a lot of his, uh, quite a few firearms were traded for, uh, his, uh, Verdan sharps that he got. So, gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, I can show off the uh, bayonet with the sharps. So, uh, let's actually get a light going on in here too. So we got oh. So yeah, this is uh my Petter Soli. So yeah, there we go. So yeah, I'll kind of stand back a little more for a uh, better view. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's a sharps with a bayonet on it. It's still a very mean look. I mean, no one really wants to be on the receiving end of any of these uh, angular bayonets like this. It's They're deadly. They are deadly. I think uh, one of the bayonets in our company has actually drawn blood and uh funny enough it was the first bayonet that was ever modified in the company for a sharps and uh it was first sergeant kep's blood that it drew which is uh always a fun uh, fun little story lego maker i can understand um there's a lot of little ways to get around uh being too hot Definitely knowing how to have the buttons on your coat set is one thing. Water, ice, and stuff like that. But, you know, the heat, heat isn't for everyone. I can definitely uh, feel your pain there. Yeah, still, though, three, uh, three guns, Trevor. That's, that is a sacrifice, but, you know. <laughs> you surrender. Uh, well, uh, so dog tags were, uh, I'm not a huge expert on those. I do know that, yes, they were around. I actually do have one. Um, I wouldn't say they were super common. Um, they were called uh, ID discs or identification tags. Um and, uh, yes, they were around. I wouldn't say they were common, though. Um, they were, I guess, uncommon. Um, sorry, I'm trying to think of uh, some instances where forms of identification like that were used. Um, the biggest one was, like, a Cold Harbor, where it was mostly, like, names written on a piece of paper and pinned on the inside of a coat or on the, the back, and stuff like that. So. Yep. I, I kind of figured they're a uh, Lego maker. Um, Trevor, unfortunately, I don't know the screw thread for the... Uh, Bennett's, uh, I don't actually have a, a screw gauge, so unfortunately I can't for sure give you a definite answer right off the bat from that, or on that. Uh, Kyle Doblin, or Dolbin, Dolbin, hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, ours is a Philadelphia issue, um, shoot, uh, the school kill arsenal, essentially. Uh, the sharpshooters primarily got their stuff. Uh, 
excuse me. Yeah, for the most part, Civil War uniform and equipment's right. The uh, uh, the ID discs weren't really a issue kind of thing like our uh, modern military dog tags today. There were the private purchase ID discs um, that were available. In fact, I have one that I can uh, grab real quick. So they would have looked something like that, which is uh, an eagle. And they didn't just have an eagle, they also had like McClellan and Lincoln on them, um, like War of 1861, the United States. And then on the, uh, the back side here, which might be really faint. Oh yeah, it doesn't really even pick that up. Um, they would have their... Uh, Thank you, Kyle. Um, they would have had uh, their company, their regiment, their name, and what town they were from. So, and some of them had them like a little necklace like this. Sometimes uh, they had a little eagle pin that would uh, be attached to the breast of their coat that this would hang off of, kind of like that in a way. Um, all sorts of stuff, so. My favorite book for information on the sharpshooters. Uh, can I say all of them? Is that a, does that work? Uh, there's quite a few. Um, uh, sharpshooters in the Army of the Potomac by C.A. Stevens is, I call it the Bible, for, uh, or the sharpshooters Bible. Um, there is uh, The Best the Union Can Muster, the, the Sharpshooters at Gettysburg by Michael Foley. That book, though, is hard to get. Uh, very hard to get, in fact. Um, there's uh, U United States Sharpshooters, The Civil War Elite by Roy Marcotte. That is also a good one, just for very basic uh, information. Jesse, my all-time favorite book on the war. Oh my god. Why why do you ask such a broad question, man? That is rough. Um I mean honestly like hard tack and coffee. I mean anything with the uh anything that's camp life. I mean yes, you know, it was the Civil War Everyone knows about the battles and uh, the uh, tactics and all that, and the weapons used. But for me, I like the personal, firsthand books. So basically, almost like all the journals, diaries, uh, stuff like that is really my favorite because you actually get to kind of live in the skin of the, the soldier at the time and kind of understand their struggles that they went through. And uh, sorry if this sounds really loud really quick, I gotta close my window before the, uh, the little neighbor kids start screaming too loud. Sweet kids, they're just insane. Yes, Shelby's, uh, Shelby's, Shelby Foote is a fantastic historian. Uh, Kyle, uh, we have done one. We went back east for the 150th Gettysburg. Um, for us, though, it's just mostly a lot of taking time off work. Um, since we live here in Washington State, it's definitely a ways to get uh, back east for any amount of time. You know, we wouldn't just want to do it for a weekend. We'd make it a, you know, kind of a week-long trip, which, you know, taking a week off of work, you know, a few times a year plus with uh, our reenacting schedule is can be a little difficult and sorry I keep having to leave 
Uh, my battery's running low on my laptop, so I just gotta grab my charger for you guys real quick. Did not know that this was wrapped around my bedpost. That was fun. <sighs> okay. Back. <laughs> I did not know that this was wrapped around my bedpost. Wrapped around my bedpost. That was fun. Wow, we've had the stream going for uh, an hour, almost an hour and 45 minutes, guys. This is really cool. <laughs> hey, Turnin. I'm not entirely sure if you guys can hear that out my window. That's uh, that's the neighborhood kids. So they uh, like to play out in the backyard of uh, the apartment that we live at so it's uh, always a little interesting this time of day when they get home from school and everything else. Of course, one of my plugins is dead, and I happen to plug that into it. And also, my charge port's a little dusty. Sorry about that, guys. There we go. Okay, now we're charging. Oh, very cool, Lego. Uh, fan fiction about Fort Delaware. That'd be really cool to see and uh, read about. So when you get that uh, going and finished, I'd like to read it if uh, you wouldn't mind. So uh, a question I have for you everyone in the chat right now what would you guys like to see um, out of the channel like more uh, video wise in some videos the stripes look white uh, probably just from the light hitting it honestly um, first sergeant Kep's stripes look uh, these are corporal stripes but they're very dark, but I think with certain lighting like that, just depends what angle they're being hit from. So, but no, they're definitely a very dark green. That is for damn sure. So, but no, that was a good, uh, good question, Trevor. Jesse, if I had enough time to make videos on everything, I would, man. <laughs> I'd be more than happy to. But
Yeah, I've actually been thinking about uh, doing a uniform layer shirt, both enlisted and uh, officer. So that'd be a really cool one to do. In fact, I might be able to do that before too long coming up. So that'd be good. Since I uh, now have a new person uh, in the unit over here in Spokane, uh, that's willing to help with videos. So that'd be really cool to do. Hey, what's going on, Matt? Glad that you're back. Uh, Jonathan, very easily doable. I'd be happy to do that for you guys. So. And Kyle, that'd be a really cool one to do. Uh, since I think some of us do have a first-person impression, so that'd be really cool. Um, see what I can do for you for that. That'd be actually a lot of fun to do. And uh, Raul, uh, sometimes uh, we've only done one, um, which was the 150th Gettysburg. Uh, it's just really hard to get from Washington State uh, to back east. So, um, but is there like full campaigner out here? Yes, there are some units that do full campaigner, and there are some that are very far be mainstream. We're kind of a mix out west here. I mean, it's just like anywhere you go, really. There's, there's your mix. Um, just kind of depends what event you go to that you'll see more than the other. And uh, Andrew, we've been really wanting to do that. Um, we actually had a plan to do it this summer. However, uh, it's been really dry uh, over here in Washington State. And uh, we've had a really high fire danger, so we actually have a shooting ban, which is super dumb uh, here in Washington State that prevents us from target shooting. We can hunt because there's not much shooting going on with hunting. And basically, our shooting ban ends at the end of this, uh, this month. Um, but we might be able to do, uh, might be able to do something like that. Um, nope, unfortunately, no real actual, like, big-time movie or uh, documentary. Just out here in Washington State, there isn't really much of uh, that going on. That's more of a, a back-east kind of kind of game. And campaign or garrison living quarters. I will also keep that in mind, Jonathan. Uh, Gomez. Um, nope, unfortunately, no, no real actual, like, big-time movie or uh, documentary. Just out here in Washington State, there isn't much. Have I ever thought about becoming a Wheats Tiger? Not really. Um, I don't know. It's just that impression just really has never uh, appealed to me. Um, I kind of like the the 5th New York or the 142nd New York uh, Zouaves. That'd be really cool. And Trevor, yes, I love doing the videos where it's just uh, First Sergeant Kep and I just sitting around joking. And I'm glad that you like the, the Farbism video. That's really cool. Um, those are always my favorite videos The Jared. It's just kind of him and I just kind of bouncing off of each other. Uh, he and I have a really good uh, friendship. And then uh, with Civil War reenacting, a working relationship going with uh, me being captain and him being my, uh, my first sergeant. So it's always a really good time doing uh, videos with him like that. So I'll definitely try to be doing more of those in the future. Well, he and I should be trying to do more of those here in the future. Yeah, we actually had a uh, um, an event near Fort Lewis here in Washington, and they actually lit their firing range on fire once uh, as we were having a battle. So you just see all the smoke kind of billowing over this tree line. It actually looked really cool, like there was something else going on on the other side. And that was really cool. Thanks, Matt. Just trying to mess with me. That's, that's yeah, you know, honestly, that's actually a really good question. Um, because I've thought about other impressions here and there just for fun, like, you know, kind of your plain Jane, uh, basic federal uniform, a Confederate stuff, and maybe some other weird off the wall ones. So, uh, yes, I've been to Fort Vancouver, uh, Fort Simcoe, 
Uh, there's been a couple forts that were around here during the Civil War time, uh, Fort Stevens down on uh, the Oregon coast. There are some forts around here also that are uh, um, around. They didn't really serve a purpose in the Civil War. It was more uh, during kind of the, the Plains and Indian Wars era, stuff like that. In fact, a really cool part about here in Spokane is about five miles from where I live is where the first combat use of the 1855 uh, Springfield uh, rifle musket was used, along with uh, south of here where the Sharps carbine was also used. Yeah, armor piercing incendiary and uh, and tracers. Yes, they do. And Matt, I'm glad the uh, the Ford video and the, the officer ones. I definitely need to do some more officer videos for you guys. Uh, you know how to maintain the sword. Um, a few other little uh, off the wall ones that I've been kind of rolling around in my head. So that'd be a lot of fun to do. Excuse me, sorry. See, how long has this stream been going for? You guys are asking some awesome questions, too. This is a lot of fun. So, uh, I'm probably going to be calling it quits here in about 12 minutes so we can kind of get like a, a two hour stream as for our first stream. But uh, yeah, keep the questions rolling until then, guys. Like, this has been a lot of fun. First time I've ever streamed, too. So, it's fun to have you guys along for the ride. In fact, another question, um, since I plan on doing this more in the future, is uh, is 4, 4.30 okay with everyone? Since I know some of you guys are um, on Eastern Time, some of you guys are on Central, so basically 4 p.m. specific time, or Pacific Time, so, you know, 7 Eastern, does that kind of work with you guys? Because I want to keep doing this. This is a lot of fun. Probably have... Uh, some people from the unit in uh, doing one of these and uh, you know some other reenactors here in uh, Washington I know Ian Melendez really wants to do this he's a really good friend of the company stuff like that Let's see when did I stop feeling bad about my impression not being perfect um, honestly there's no perfect impression. Um, yes, there are the mega farbs, stuff like that, but we're technically, I mean, when you think about it, we're all farbs. Even if you have the perf the most perfect drill, uh, the perfect, you know, hand-sewn uniforms, stuff like that, we're all farbs because, you know, we're not eating period rations every day. We're not living outside every day. We're relatively for the most part not the weight that the soldiers were we're not you know suffering from chronic you know dysentery for some and everything like that so no impression is perfect um so i've really never felt bad about it unless it was my earlier years looking back and just like wow yeah that that early enlisted impression I had was pretty god awful. So, oh, very nice, Jonathan. That's awesome. Cool. I'm glad the timings worked for everyone here. So, uh, Andrew, my favorite Civil War recipe. Uh, First Sergeant Kep turned me on to uh, Lobscouse, which is really good. Um, I also like, uh, what is it, swoosh, just uh, cornmeal or flour, just breaded, fried in bacon fat. I love bread, so go figure. Cool, yeah, um, I'm thinking probably Wednesdays and Thursdays. Wednesdays or Thursdays would be the time for streaming, stuff like that. And I definitely would put out a notification for everyone, so. 
Uh, thanks, Kyle, for letting me know. Yeah, I wouldn't be on a weekend for an event or anything like that. I don't want to cut into your guys' stuff. Yeah, Corn Dodgers. That's good. Thanks, Jesse. This has been a lot of fun, you guys. I've really been enjoying this, so thank you guys again so much for uh, being part of this. Who knows? Maybe one of these times I can have one of my weird, uh, weird roommates in here do a, you know, living with a reenactor segment. Because I know my uh, my roommates definitely think it's uh, interesting. No, oh, excellent, Andrew. That's awesome. One day. One day I'll be living that life too, and I'll be bored, more bored than I already am, and I work and do reenacting and a bunch of projects for it. So when I really don't have to work, that'll be fun. Really? Chicken gizzards rolled in cornmeal? I've never tried that. That is actually a really interesting recipe. Yes, yes, significant others do tolerate a lot. I know uh, uh, Mrs. Kep, uh, First Sergeant Kep's wife, she definitely puts up a lot with uh, First Sergeant Kep's my uh, shenanigans, especially when I uh, visit them cross state. It's always, you know, this gaggle of, you know, laughing and jokes and ideas being thrown around that she kind of just like, oh, great, great. What are they planning now? What are, you know, what are they getting their heads into? Because uh, also, uh, Mrs. Kep does reenact with us, so. Ooh, sausage and apples. That sounds good. I love apples, and so especially bratwurst. I love bratwurst, so we'll definitely have to try that. Hey, Victor, what's going on? Good to see that you're in this, too. Uh, Victor and uh, actually Nikki Turnin are both members of uh, Company D, so it's really cool to have them uh, jump in on this. Bubble and squeak, yep. I tried that once. Didn't turn out too well. I'm not a great cook. I mean, I cook enough just to get by. If I really want to eat something good, one of my roommates is uh, the head chef at where he works, so I ever want good food. In fact, I might be going there after this. This sounds like a great, great idea. German German cuisine. Can't, uh, can't turn that down. Yes, Andrew, please do. That'd be really cool. Greatly appreciate that. All right, so about five more minutes, guys. Um, so, no, like I said, it's been great having you guys on. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, down the road, too, the, the live streams will be a lot better. Um, like I said, I'm working on building a, a PC for... For some online gaming and uh, uh, doing streams better too, so I need some to process a little better than my uh, than my laptop. Uh, 
Uh, Blake, I think filter canteens are the coolest thing. Uh, the Bartholomew canteens. Uh, I've oh, ever since I became an officer, I've wanted to get my hands on an Axel Ulrich one. Um, those things are really cool, and yes, I do feel they are very underrepresented. But I think the reason why they're so hard to make and therefore they're expensive is also a good thing, because then everyone uh, would be using them. You know, it's like a, uh, you know, one of those more easily accessible things that everyone wants to do it. And just really don't need that. Uh, Lego Maker, always be researching. Always be uh, looking to improve your impression. Never settle for just good enough. Always try to strive to do the next thing up more. Um, that's the best uh, advice I can give you, is when you do reenacting. Always strive to do better. That's what I've done, and it's paid off. <laughs> Uh, Trevor, uh, the best way to get a hold of us for uh, questions on impressions is go to www.2nd2ussss.com. Uh, my email is on there, and you can get a hold of me that way. I check my email pretty frequently. Um, sometimes it might be a day or two until I get back to you, mainly just because uh, work. Um, you know, I do have a life outside of work, doing videos, stuff like that. So sometimes it just gets a little bit. Uh, a little bit going on that, but I will get back to you on that to help. I always happy to help uh, fellow reenactors get ahead. Yeah, Matt, go ahead. Be happy to help. <laughs> and Trevor, yes. Uh, well, first of all, Lego Maker, yes, you're very welcome. Very, very welcome. And uh, Trevor, yeah, uh, I don't know, it might be the, the German heritage I have of overdoing everything and over-engineering. It, you know, when I do something, uh, I think one of my favorite things was from uh, Perks and Rec with Ron Swanson, you know, don't half-ass two things, whole-ass one thing. Well, I think I probably two-ass reenacting, because <laughs> I, I go into it full bore, always have ever since my first event. Um, it's when I really started learning more about the sharpshooter impression and impressions in general is when I really started uh, digging into everything. So, Oh, and Andrew, uh, I just saw that on the chat, too. Thank you very much for sending that. Uh, I'm pretty sure I just got it. So, thank you very much. In fact, uh, da, 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 da. yes, also, thank you. Um, I keep forgetting to reply to your email. Um, uh, yes, thank you for the Melbourne Hill uh, marker email. That was really cool. Hey, what's going on, Severson? Um, technically, you kind of did miss the live stream, buddy, because uh, I'm getting off here in like a minute. <laughs> but uh, I'll be doing it again probably next Wednesday or Thursday, so I'll let you know ahead of time so you can uh, get in on it, man. So yes, I technically have three of the sharpshooters in the live stream right now. I got uh, Private Severson, Private Turnin, and uh, Private Hanks. So this is really cool. Yeah, I should probably be uh, getting off the stream here. I got to go uh, eat some dinner and stuff like that and get ready for tomorrow's day, even though it's only 6 o'clock, but it takes me forever to do stuff, so go figure. But, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Severson, man. 
So, uh, anyways, I want to thank everyone that's been in, uh, watching the stream, commenting, stuff like that. This has been great. Uh, look forward to doing it uh, next week with you guys. Um, hopefully, if you guys want to keep it weekly, we can move to every other week. Uh, stuff like that, but um, no, like I said, this has been a lot of fun, and I can't thank you guys enough for uh, for being a part of this for our first real live stream. This is really cool. Um, it's like yeah, you know, you look on online and on our thing, and we see uh, uh, we see that you know we have like a thousand plus subscribers, but actually, you know, having people be a part of this really makes it a lot more real for us. And Victor, message me on Facebook, man. I've got to know how that cap impression went. That sounds so weird. But uh, anyways, thank you guys for uh, joining us or joining me on this. Hopefully next week I might be able to have uh, one of the other sharpshooters on. Uh, maybe another reenactor here from the Spokane area. Maybe one of my roommates so we can kind of get a, a little mix in on this. Um, that'd be kind of fun. But anyways, I hope everyone has a good night. And uh, look forward to talking with you guys next week. Have a good one.